Hello and welcome back to Surgery and Spotlight. This time we're talking about goods, specifically alumina traffic. In the aluminium manufacturing process, an ore known as bauxite is processed into alumina using the Bayer process. This alumina is then smelted into aluminium. This metal is incredibly energy intensive to produce and as such is often done nearby to plentiful supplies of electricity. For example, in the UK there was a regular traffic of alumina from Burntisland in eastern Scotland to the aluminium works at Fort William or Kinloch Leven. It's this traffic that I've based my operations on. At Burntisland, bauxite arrived mainly from Ghana in Africa via ship, and so it made sense for me to locate the works at my international port of Tidmouth. As the Reverend Audrey wrote, the smelting works is located up in the mountains at Peel Godred, where it uses hydroelectric power from the dams and reservoirs. So, to transport the alumina from one place to another, I needed to make a fleet of suitable wagons. These were the first ones I produced, and there are currently eight in the roster. The design is closely based on the LNR's own alumina wagons, themselves adapted from the standard 20-ton wooden-bodied coal hoppers. Handily, a rather lovely kit is available from Slater's for these. I adapted it by extending the planks upwards and adding lids using styrene strips. The hatches are all cast ones produced by RT models, and the handrails are made using 0.45 brass wire. I added boards for the crew to stand on when accessing the hatches, which are held up using styrene L section. The colour is Rover Russet Brown from Halfords, the standard Northwestern goods wagon colour. All the wording was made up of individual letters using both Fox transfers and the Slater's ones included with the kit. There's a bit of a mix of fonts which I quite like as it shows that the wagons were re-liveried and re-lettered at different points of their lives. Although the coal wagons were rated to 20 tonnes, when converted to carry alumina they were downrated, in my case to 16 tonnes. The L and the R ones were 15 tonnes, then uprated to 17 during the war. What I quite like about this operation is the thought that loaded trains are going uphill and empties down, which provides opportunity for the future spectacle of alumina rakes being banked up the incline from Wellsworth before being transferred to electric locos at Kildane. As always, I hope you enjoyed the slice of Sudry in life, and maybe it'll prompt some of you to think of interesting traffic flows on your own railways. Also, for all you Sudrian fans, the new Flying Kipper Catch of the Day poster is now available in the Railway Mania shop alongside the Under the Stars poster. There will be a link in the description. If you've already bought one and have hung it up, please do send me a photo of it on Instagram or Facebook, because I'd really love to see them. Thanks again, Surgery and Spotlight will return again soon.